Pirates, shipwreck, execution, themes all too common in swashbuckling novels and films. But piracy was big business back in the 17th century and here to tell us more about one of the real life stories of pirates is writer and historian Dr. Ian Friel. Welcome to the show. Now the story that you're going to tell us begins in Jamaica. Just tell us a bit about it. Uh, well, it's, it's a story that I came across in, in the course of doing some research on a broader project. And um, the reason I've chosen this is because it's, um, it, it's typical of what's called the golden age of piracy. I mean, we think of Treasure Island or Pirates of the Caribbean. They, they all tend to have a, an exotic Caribbean type setting or something mm -hmm. of that sort. And this is a story that actually starts in the Caribbean, although it's, uh, um, it, it's a good bit earlier than, say, the story of Treasure Island. Um, and it covers the years 1683 and 1684. And uh, it, it's about a, a voyage, a pirate voyage from the starting of Jamaica, uh, went up to Canada, across the Atlantic to West Africa, then back again across the Atlantic. And so much of what happened in it w was, was so typical of the way pirates at the time behaved and, and tells us a lot about So how did Jamaica. pirates of the time behave? Well, in, in many ways, uh, a lot of the ways the storybooks um, say, I mean, so they drink lots of rum, they sing songs, not, they have parrots? Well, probably would have done brandy, I think. Brandy, more, more right, okay. You certainly get references to brandy in the accounts. I mean, the, the sources we've got for this come from the interrogations of five pirates after being captured, and they, they broadly corroborate each other, so they, you know, I think the, the information is fairly reliable. And um, what, what happened is that this uh, it starts off in early 1683 when a, a, a man called Jeremy Ravel recruited a, a, a crew um, on Jamaica to uh, go and, he said, uh, go on a, what he called a voyage of purchase, it was basically you know, stealing from the Spanish. Uh, he recruited this crew, they, they sailed off towards the South American coast and um, eventually they had to decide exactly where they were going. The captain wanted to go to Mexico uh, but the rest of the rest of the crew wanted to go to West Africa, um, which is where there were lots of riches, particularly from the slave trade, which was starting to boom at this time. Um, and uh, uh, because of this disagreement, the uh, the captain had to leave the ship. He, he and a few of his supporters were were actually marooned on a desert island. I mean, it's sort of typical pirate. <laughs> it's stuff. amazing that kind of uh, stuff actually happened. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, and, and what what was even odder that the um, the pirates, because pirate crews had a sort of rough kind of democracy, which is completely at odds with the, the rest of the 17th century world. Um, they chose the ship's doctor, uh, a man called John Graham, as the new captain, and he, instead of taking them immediately to West Africa, sailed up the American coast and ended up off Nova, Nova Scotia. So it must have been quite hard to kind of instill your leadership then if you're a pirate captain at any it, moment, if your crew suddenly decide, oh, we don't actually fancy doing that, pal. Off you go, you beat yeah, it off. It must be very <laughs> difficult. I mean, the, the people, I think, stayed in, in leadership positions if they had you know, charisma, strength of personality, professional ability, also the ability to keep providing a, a regular stream of, of loot, um, <laughs> but also probably personal brutality or combinations of all three. Right, it, it's so quite much notable. for Ravel then. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, he obviously wasn't um, either charismatic or brutal enough, uh, one or the other, but um, uh, they sailed up to Nova Scotia, uh, they captured some small French ships and got a haul of skins and beaver, uh, it was beaver skins and uh, uh, sorry, beaver pelts and moose skins, and uh, in themselves they don't sound much, but they're quite valuable. But this seems to precipitate another row within the crew because they then got rid of the the second captain, John Graham, and elected someone else to to lead them, and and sailed off to to West Africa, and and there the start, story starts getting considerably darker because. Um, we tend to think of pirates, um, for one thing, attacking other ships, which they, they did. They attacked um, six other ships in the course of this voyage and, and were involved in two sea battles. But they also engaged in attacks on settlements on land and got involved in the slave trade. Uh, the, the, the pirates on these, these three ships, the Resolution, which were named Resolution successively, uh, attacked at least um, four Portuguese-ruled islands off the, the coast of Africa. But uh, worse than that, they, they actually got involved in slave trading um, in, a, in a small way, um, acquiring slaves from a captured ship, selling them off, then kidnapping some more Africans. And, and then... Dr. Frill, what kind of people became pirates? Ah, well, that's a good question. Mostly um, people who were, were very poor and desperate because um, it, it, it had the, 
there was the incentive of getting rich quick, and I'm sure that lured a lot of people in the same way that you know, people will, will must have been quite dangerous, buy, buy lottery though. tickets in the hope of getting rich. I mean, not, yes. not quite the same as piracy, <laughs> but um, the, yeah, I mean, it's potentially dangerous, but they, they lived hard lives. Um, we know that at least two of the resolution pirates from their testimonies um, became pirates because they, they were already sailors on other ships, and they were afraid that the ship, the, their own ship was going to run out of food and drink. So someone was offering them so They quite literally jumped drink. ship. Yeah, yes, <laughs> in, in, indeed. The, 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 there was the chance of you know, being fed, <laughs> which was a big incentive, but also this chance of you know, riches, which, which they never really got. There was no, no real case of um, treasure chests full of doubloons and things of that sort. They, they, they kept um, capturing things, uh, selling them off. They, they captured slaves, sold those off. Um, I don't think any of them made very much so money. They must out have been quite good merchants as well, then. Dr. Phil, thank you very much for your thank time. You. I'm afraid we're all out of time, but I'm sure lots of people watching found that as fascinating as me. Thank you. Thank you.